This is GTV, a channel with all the bells and whistles. What genre of video games has the most loyal following? The most dedicated fans? Out of all of the games that are out there, one type has more fans who love their games more than anyone else. Sorry RPG fans, I'm talking about shooters. Oh god, no! Not that! Get that garbage out of here! I'm talking about real shooters. You know, a tiny spaceship going the distance against a million enemies and giant bosses. The kind of battle that could never be won in real life, but somewhere, out there, deep in a far off corner of another galaxy, on a tiny bedroom TV, somewhere at 2 a.m., it can. And in that genre of the hundreds of great games that have come and gone, one series in particular has had a large, loving fan base. And this video is just for them. Stay here. This is the Twin Bee Story. The origins of Twin B begin in the shadows of the Japanese takeover of the gaming industry. Original creations that were designed in Japan, such as Galaga and Xevious, were massive international hits in their day. They owe that success to the original innovative game that set shooting games and Japanese games in motion, Space Invaders. Following the massive success of Space Invaders in 1978, each game that came afterwards paid homage to the basic formula. Shoot the bad guys while you try to survive. Each new game inspired by Space Invaders would add their own individual unique attributes. Games that followed those did the same as well, which allowed the genre to expand and evolve into all kinds of different creations, which were both unique but distinctly familiar at once. By 1984, there were scores of shooting games for the arcade and at home. In any other genre, you might say that there were too many games. A glut, if you will. But shooter fans couldn't get enough of them. And today, shoot 'em ups or shmups, as they're also known, still remain a favorite for those of us who came of age in the 1980s. Konami had released a few shooters in those days, namely Time Pilot and Scramble. In 1984, Konami set out to create a shooting game that would outdo the current big hit, Xevious. Elements from Scramble were incorporated to allow for a game to be created more quickly, and for a while was called Scramble 2. The game would turn out to be the first of an amazing, long-running, best-selling series called Gradius. Gradius was designed to be a superior game to Xevious, but they had very few things in common. While Gradius was in development, Konami was working on a separate game, concurrently, that had a similar feel to Xevious, but would look quite different. It would be a game that scrolled vertically, and allowed the player to shoot enemies that were airborne, or bomb them on the ground, almost identical to Xevious. However, the dark, serious, and mature nature of Xevious, Gradius, and every other shooter heretofore released was thrown out for a style that was bright and colorful. That game would become Twin B, and with that, a new subgenre called the Cute 'em Up would be born. It was an interesting strategy for Konami to release two games of the same genre at the same time that would also be so different from each other. If one failed and the other succeeded, it would still provide the company with a success. However, both games became hits in their own right and would expand into full, proper series, which would occasionally cross over and be forever tied together. But what is the appeal of Twin B over Gradius? What keeps this strange little game series so popular? And if it is indeed so beloved, why isn't it more well known? Let's take a look at the full Twin B series and lots more after this quick timeout. Konami. Oh. 
Konami. With Gradius, Konami was planning to create the ultimate shoot-em-up for the time, but also developed Twinbee alongside it. The development of both games affected each other and set some pretty solid ground rules in place for how the game should work. Gradius would be a horizontally scrolling game, while Twinbee would be a vertically scrolling game. Gradius would be set in space. Twinbee would be set on Earth. Gradius would be dark and mysterious. Twin B would be cute and friendly. Gradius would be one player. Twin B would offer two player simultaneous play. Both games utilize a weapon power up system, but how you select those power ups is different, with Gradius letting you choose to equip or charge it up, while in Twin B you have to shoot it a certain number of times to change its effects. These rules helped keep Gradius and Twin B distinct in both visual and gameplay styles. The Twin B storyline and characters in the game would follow the idea of keeping things cute and fun. Many elements of the storyline would develop over time, but the original game takes place on Donburi Island, somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. In the year 2081, the evil King Spice invades and conquers the island, taking five sacred items from the people as well. Dr. Cinnamon, a resident of the island, intends to liberate the people of Donburi and build two flying robots that resemble bumblebees called Twinbee and Winbee. Over the course of the game, Twinbee and Winbee rediscover these sacred items and rid King Spice from Donburi Island. Twinbee first appeared as an arcade game in Japan in March 1985, later coming home to the family computer and MSX in Japan in 1986. As an interesting side note, both the arcade and home versions were released before Gradius on their respective machines. The MSX version was also released in Europe sometime in 1986. This was followed by versions on the Sharp X68000 and Family Computer Disk System in 1988. There was no version released on the NES in Europe or America, while Gradius was released there and was well received. With the Konami Command helping to make Gradius an NES staple back then, and a classic now. Reasons for the game being left behind point to the stark differences between Twin B and Gradius. Western fans possibly not connecting with the game, Twin B was also a slightly older game, and the fact that Konami was constrained to releasing only five NES games per year. Remember that in the NES days, Konami also had Castlevania, Contra, and Double Dribble out around this time. But those of us in the West were fully unaware of the impact that Twin B was having in Japan, where it was a hit right from the start. Twin B was so popular that Sega released their own cute em up, Fantasy Zone, in 1986. These two games laid the foundation of the subgenre, which in later years led to great games like Cotton, Harmful Park, Air Zonk, and Gradius itself got a cute em up makeover with the spin off series Parodius. After the first games of Twin B and Gradius were established hits, Konami got to work on a follow-up for each. The sequel to Twin B would see release in November 1986, alongside the sequel to Gradius, Salamander, known in the US as Life Force. And yes, I know there's also a proper Gradius 2, and Life Force isn't actually Gradius 2, but we're already all over the map, and I'll be saving that for another video someday later. The sequel to Twin Bee was released for the Family Computer Disk System and was called Moero Twin Bee Cinnamon Hakaseo Skue. In English, Burn Twin Bee, Save Dr. Cinnamon. Introduced in the game is a third ship called Gwyn Bee. The story takes place 100 years after the first game when Dr. Cinnamon is kidnapped by Gatlantis, grandson of King Spice. This game would come to the US as Stinger in 1987. Despite the first Twin B being available in Europe, though on the MSX, no version of Stinger was released there. The plot is slightly different in Stinger, as Dr. Cinnamon is abducted by aliens who want to use a special sugar invented by him to turn the Earth into a giant cotton candy ball and eat it. If you remember back just a bit, when I discussed the ground rules for both the Gradius and Twin B series, for the sequels, Moero Twin B and Salamander, those rules were bent slightly, as both games feature a mix of horizontal and vertical stages, and Salamander allowed for multiplayer action. However, after this, for all successive games, the style for both reverted back to their original format, 
Also, it's worth mentioning that in the Japanese version, three people can play simultaneously, using the two hardwired family computer controllers and plugging a third controller into the front expansion port. This feature was removed from Stinger, as were cutscenes that filled in the game's plot. Moedo Twin B was also reissued on a family computer cartridge in 1993 with an easier difficulty mode added. There would be one more Twin B game released for the family computer in Japan. Twin B3, Poco Poco Dai Mao. The game returns to the original Twin B formula, still allows for simultaneous two players, but not three, and is slightly easier with a user selectable difficulty and the implementation of the Soul Revival system, which lets the player catch the ghost of a lost life to regain all previous power ups. The reason for the lack of a third player, though, is tied into the plot of the game, as the Demon King, Poco Poco, kidnaps Gwynby, and it's up to Twinby and Winby to save him. Twin B3 was released in Japan in September 1989, and has never been released outside of Japan in any form. Following this, Twin B would appear on the Game Boy with Twin B Da. In English, literally, it's Twin B. Twin B and Win B are up to the challenge again, this time from the evil Dr. Nikki, who is revealed as Dr. Cinnamon's longtime rival and the brains behind the main antagonists of the first three Twin B games. Twin B Da saw release in Japan in October 1990 and would be released in Europe in 1994, but adopted the name Pop and Twin B instead. However, before that game went to Europe, there was a second, separate, Pop and Twin B game released in Europe and Japan for the Super Famicom and Super NES. Pop and Twin B came out in 1993, but to keep things in Japanese chronological order, that will have to wait, because the next game would be the second arcade release, Detana Twin B. In English, here comes Twin B. Released in 1991, Twin B and Win B pick up an SOS signal from the Princess Melora of the planet Mel and travel there to save her. The game would receive a port for the Sharp X68000 and PC Engine in 1992. The game would also come to Europe, but was called Bells and Whistles, which is a clever name, despite that the Twin B name was already known there. The next game was Pop and Twin B, the 16-bit version, which looks and feels closest to the arcade Daytona Twin B, but is an original game. In Pop and Twin B, a once good scientist, Dr. Mardok, turns mad after getting a nasty bump on the head and plans to conquer Earth with an army of acorns. As I said before, the game came out in Japan and Europe in 1993, with no American release. The last traditional Twin B outing came as an arcade game in 1995. Twin B, Yahoo, Fushigi no Kuni, Oabare, in English, Uproar in Wonderland. In this game, Twin B and Win B travel to the far off Wonderland to rescue the imprisoned Princess Melody. The game featured voiced animated cutscenes and was later released for the Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn alongside Daytona Twin B as a two in one compilation. Since then, Twin B the Shoot 'em Up has gone mostly dark. However, the series lived on. When we come back, all the Twin B games of other genres. Konami Game Boy Soft. Twin B is loved in Japan and has a few devoted fans in the West, however frustrating it might be. And Konami has paid back those fans with heaps of Twin B spin-offs and cameos, at least in Japan. Not long after the release of Pop and Twin B, Konami turned Twin B into a side-scrolling action game with Pop and Twin B Rainbow Bell Adventures. Rather than flying, Twin B, Win B, and Gwyn B must run, jump, and punch their way across Donburi Island. The game was released in 1994 for the Super Famicom in Japan and Super NES in Europe, with America being left out yet again. There are differences between regions. 
with the Japanese version having multiple exits and stage paths, while the European version is linear. The Japanese version also includes character voices and battery backup. Twin B Taisen Puzzle Dama was released for the Sony PlayStation in 1994. It was one of many games in Konami's Taisen Puzzle Dama series. In this version, the game takes on the world and characters of Twin B. Twin B RPG was released for the Sony PlayStation in 1998. The game is set in the Twin B world on Donburi Island and uses characters from multiple games to tell the story. In Twin B RPG, Light, the pilot of Twin B, has gone missing, and it's up to you, the player, to find him. This game is a standard turn-based RPG, but has unique experience and monetary systems. Every enemy has a fixed number of experience points, and then that number is increased or decreased depending on the character's level at that time. Each character levels up after every 5,000 points. Money is dropped by enemies, but not much, and instead they often drop fruits, which are exchanged for money at certain shops in the game. This is another game that was left behind in Japan, but it wasn't for fear of not being well received abroad. Twin B RPG was not a success in Japan, and was actually a financial loss for Konami, meaning that to localize the game elsewhere would cost even more money, and Konami would never break even. Twin B Paradise in Donburishima was an interactive CD-ROM that was released in 1998 for Windows 95 compatible computers. It isn't a game, but more of an interactive encyclopedia. Players can visit different places on Donburi Island to research different databases about Twin B games and characters. There are also quiz games and a few interactive movies. A second disc included, called Twin B Doki Doki Wonderland, offers Twin B themed desktop wallpapers, screensavers, and icons. Twin B JG Pachislo was a slot machine game that was distributed to Pachinko and slot machine parlors in Japan, and has been available since 2007. You can't win any money, as gambling is illegal in Japan, but the metal coins you would win could be traded for prizes, or maybe if there's a TUC nearby, they'll buy them back from you. In 2013, the Twin Bee series finally returned to its roots, with Line Go Go Twin Bee, playable through the Line iPhone app in Japan. It's nice to see the game finally get a somewhat modern version, but if you're looking to play Twin Bee on more modern gaming hardware, the best bet is Twin Bee Portable for the Sony PSP, which features all of the original shoot 'em up Twin Bee games and gives Twin Bee Da a full color makeover. Oh, did I say all the games? Well, I was wrong. There is no Moeru Twin Bee, aka Stinger. It wouldn't be a proper Twin Bee without leaving something out for no reason. Now, those are all the side games that are set in the Twin Bee universe, but there are dozens of games where Twin Bee makes a cameo, and let's start with the biggest, the best, and the most well known Parodius. The game series that turns Gradius into a cutem up. There were several Parodius games released in arcades and at home between 1988 and 1996, and Twin Bee is one of the playable characters alongside Vic Viper from Gradius, as well as characters from Goemon, Antarctic Adventure, and a slew of other Konami heroes. Parodius had its own spin off series, Otomadius, and Twin Bee characters appear in that series as well. Konami YY World is a platform game released for the family computer in 1988 that is similar to Parodius in that the game features almost every Konami character in one crazy crossover. Twin Bee, along with Vic Viper, are playable in the game's shooter stages. Players also visit Dr. Cinnamon's laboratory, where you can heal up and be brought back to life. Dr. Cinnamon also created Konami Man and Konami Lady, who are in the game. As an aside, you can also find Konami Man hiding in a few Castlevania games. Also found in YY World are Goemon, Simon Belmont, Pentaro, King Kong, and Mikey from the Goonies game. In 1991, Konami released YY World 2, and in this game, the main playable character is a robot named Rickle, built by Dr. Cinnamon, and brings back many of the cast from the first game. There wasn't a YY World 3, but Konami did jump on the Mario Kart clone bandwagon with Konami Crazy Racers for the Game Boy Advance, released worldwide in 2001. Pastel is a playable character, as well as more recent Konami characters. For American gamers, it would be the first Twin B-related release since Stinger. 
in Tokimeki Memorial for the PC Engine Super CD-ROM ROM, there's a Twin B minigame that you can play. New Love Plus for the Nintendo DS has one as well. Battle Trist was an arcade fighter released in 1998. Pastel is an unlockable character. Another fighting game, Dream Mix TV World Fighters for the Nintendo GameCube and Sony PlayStation 2, has Twin B as a playable character as well. This game was a crossover between Konami and Hudson Soft, but since then, Konami has bought Hudson, which made it easy to include Light and Pastel in later Bomberman games. Air Force Delta for the Sega Dreamcast also lets you play as Twin B. It's pretty cool to see Twin B appear in something so realistic, and all of these appearances are pretty remarkable considering that the proper series ended in 1995. Now, those are the mainstream games where characters from Twin B are playable, either through the whole game or in part. There are still countless more games where Twin B characters make non-playable cameos, such as a power-up in the Goonies for the family computer, Gradius for MSX, and a few Castlevania games. In Gambare Goemon 3, you can meet Pastel in one of the shops. I think it's funny that somehow a pilot from the future is just hanging out in an ancient Japanese village for no real reason. And in the Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn versions of Snatcher, Light and other Konami characters are seen at the Outer Heaven. In Snatcher, you can also change the backgrounds to Twin B and other Konami-themed games by entering the Konami command up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start at the title screen. It's these little winks and nods to the fans that helped Twin B endure for such a long time. It still doesn't end there, because in some of Konami's music and rhythm games, like Dance Dance Revolution, Pop and Music, and Beat Mania, stage music from various Twin B games can be heard. But how could this fandom grow out of just a few 8 and 16-bit games? Well, it had a lot of help from other media to grow the fanbase and mold the Twin B universe. When we come back, the books, TV shows, and albums of Twin B. Everybody, welcome to the Konami YY World. Konami no Ninki character ga dai shugo. 1988 nen saisho no soft wa kore. Konami YY World. Famicom yo cassette 1 gatsu chujun hatsubai. Thank you. Konami. Mada utoran yo. Chaka shooting Parodius da. Mou sugu hatsubai. Konami. あの、ツインビーパラダイスがついにアニメになって登場。パステルライト、ミントのツインビーチームが画面の中で大暴れ。我も博士と最強メカも必見。窓かの天然ボケも健在。宿の際の完全オリジナルストーリーが3巻3
also had their own mangas around the time of their releases. In 1993, Comic Gamest began to print Twin Bee manga issues that ran throughout the 1990s. These stories covered the events of later games and created additional background elements to go along with the game's story. In the 1990s, a few anime videos about Twin Bee were produced. Twin Bee's 1/8 Panic was produced as a promotional item for the release of Rainbow Bell Adventures. In the story, Pastel ate magic cookies and shrunk to a tiny size. To return to normal, she needs a power-up bell, easily found in the clouds. However, a mysterious force was stealing all of the clouds over Donburi Island, and the Twin Bee team needs to figure out why. In 1999, a new original video animation series was produced with three more episodes. A collection of all Twin Bee anime was released on a two-disc DVD set in 2007. But none of this can compete with the Twin Bee radio drama. Yeah, there was a Twin Bee show on the radio. It was actually quite popular and ran for three years, having nearly 100 episodes. The Twin Bee Paradise radio drama ran from 1993 to 1997. The radio program is actually the most important product from the Twin Bee universe besides the games. These programs canonized many of the characters' names, including Light and Pastel, and expanded many plot points that couldn't be done in the game. The voice actors from this program also lent their voices to later games and the anime. The Twin Bee RPG game was made specifically for fans of the radio program, more than for fans of the shooting games, and was envisioned as a way to interact with the world that was created through the radio program. The collection of radio episodes of Twin Bee Paradise were later released on CD. Here's a quick listen. The Twin Bee soundtracks also saw separate releases in different compilations over the years. They're pretty rare and expensive nowadays. The Twin Bee Paradise radio drama had its own soundtrack, which featured the episode's open and end themes. The album was titled Twin Bee Vocal Paradise, featuring Mariko Koda, and went all the way to number 20 on the Japanese Oricon music chart in 1996. After going over the games, spin-offs, cameos, and other productions, at great length I might add, You'd think there'd be nothing left to say, but there is just one more thing. There is a Twin Bee aircraft that exists in real life. This Twin Bee was designed by Mr. Joseph Gigante in the 1960s as an upgrade to the existing CB amphibious aircraft. These types of planes were meant for use over island chains and atolls for quick takeoffs and landings in water. The design of the Twin Bee by Mr. Gigante somewhat matches that of the Twin Bee in the game, with a wide nose and large front windows. While these real-life Twin Bee planes never saw widespread use, the coincidence is too uncanny and just so crazy that I personally believe the game's designers had to be inspired by them. Mr. Gigante passed away in 2012 at age 96, but his planes are still in use today. While he isn't Dr. Cinnamon, thanks to him, there's a little bit of hope that there just might be a Twin Bee still flying in the air over the Pacific Ocean in the year 2081. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and tell me why. Then subscribe and hit the bell, no pun intended, to be updated on the latest videos. Then take a look at one of these videos from the GTV archives. We'll see you there.